Hi again, this is Kevin. Um, uh, today, during our connection training session, I promised to make a recording of um, some additional settings and customizations that um, you can set in the OCLC connection client. Um, some of these things I will talk about in this short video were covered, but um, since they all kind of come together, I just I'm including them anyway. Um, so here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a slide and then walk through the steps um, in the client itself. So here the first thing is how to get to the display settings um, in the tools menu. So you go to the menu tools and you choose options and you will come up with this window here. Um, and what you will do is you, the three most important for display issues are the fonts tab, which is right here, record display and toolbar. And we'll look at those right now. Okay, so I'm in the OCLC connection client. I go to the tools menu options, and we're going to start with fonts. Um, now, actually, before we do that, let's let's bring up a record so we can see something um, on the screen. And just okay. So at this point, I'm looking at a bibliographic record. This is the font I have set. Um, if I go to tools and options. Um, I can change to the, the display size of this font. If you want the font to be bigger, you can let's increase it to 16. And in order to make the, um, the font changes stick, you have to hit apply. You hit apply and it should increase the font. Now, what you'll notice is that the boxes got bigger, but the font itself didn't get bigger. So here's another weird OCLC connection quirk is sometimes you have to actually close the record and reopen it and at that point the font is much bigger as as you can see here um, you can do the same uh, font changing for the list we saw the list of um, bibliographic records here there's a list of my results and you know the font's a little bit small so let's uh let's resize those to 16 also hit apply and this one actually just it just made them bigger right away. So that's one way to control your display in OCLC connection. Um, I will warn you that it will also allow you to change the actual font. But since we are working with a lot of materials that have that have um, titles or authors that have diacritics in them, um, you. I would suggest not changing this out from area of Unicode to something else, because if it's not a Unicode font, it may not display the diacritics or the um, the non-Latin scripts correctly. So I, I suggest just keeping this as a Unicode font up here. I don't know what this stuff does down here. Label printing probably has to do with printing labels for the sides, of, you know, for the spines of books, but um, I don't actually know what that does. Um, the next setting we want to look at is record display. And record display is a way to change the actual um, display of the screen in terms of the colors of the boxes and things like that. Um, it only works for the, it only seems to work for the records themselves. So here's a, here's a record that we have open. And notice I have a gray box and I have black font and I have white background on that font. Um, if we go to record display, I can actually change the color of the window. If we want to make it bright green, let's make it bright green. Apply. So I can do that. Um, I can change the color of the font to be purple. And hit apply. And oh, now this is one of those cases where you actually have to close the record. Uh, and reopen it. Um, unfortunately, it, it, it's there. Now we have purple font. And I can also change the background color of the um, 
of the fields themselves. I don't know color. Let's make it orange. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, probably not the best way to read your bib records, but you know, if you have a special um, need to change the colors of your background or your uh, windows, then that's great. Go for it. Um, I, I think that in a lot of cases, um, it can help with legibility and things like that. But I, I prefer mine to be gray and black and white. So that's what I do. Okay. Um, you'll also notice that if you do work with authority records, you can actually set uh, different colors for a bib record window and an authority record window. And what that helps with is for me, since I work with both bibliographic and authority records, I can tell when I'm looking at an authority record because it has a yellow background rather than a white background. All right, I think that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, the next one is we're gonna look at the toolbar settings. And this one is simple. It's either standard button size or large button size. So these are the buttons they're talking about here. Um, and they're kind of small, to be honest. So you can change it to large, you can hit apply, and you can close. Now, this is one of those um, settings that you not only have to close out of your records to see, but you actually have to close the entire OCLC client um, and reopen it. So we're going to do that. Uh, oh, it opened on my other screen. So here, hold on. Where did it go? Move it over here. Open up and notice that the buttons themselves have become much larger, um, more legible. Uh, so that's that's a, under tools, options, uh, toolbar here. And I'll leave them large for now because I, I don't want to have to close out to for the rest of this demo. So we'll just leave them big. Um, the next setting, oh, the next thing I wanted to just demonstrate, and Robert talked about this a little bit, is you can move these toolbars around. And one of the most, I think one of the, well, I don't know if it's the most useful, but you can move them to the, you can move it to the side. Um, so you can have your buttons on the side and you can have the search box here in the, you know, on the top. Um, notice that some of the things don't enlarge. It's only the buttons on the main toolbar that enlarge. Um, and finally, we have the toolbar editor. And that one's going to be, oh, we can do that. OK, so um, toolbar editor is a way to um, add and remove uh, things from your toolbar. Oh, you know, I didn't show you the slides, but here we go. So. To drag the toolbars, you click on the you click and hold on the little light gray dots on the edge of the things and just move them around, and they will stick to the sides of the top. And then finally, here we go. This is how to get uh, the tools. Get to the toolbar editor. You go to the tools menu, and then you go to the toolbar editor, and it'll pop up a window like this. And this is how you edit what uh, buttons are actually on your toolbar. And I will demo that real quick. I'm going to move this back up to the top so I can see more buttons, um, even though they're giant. Uh, so let's say Tools Toolbar Editor. And it opened up over here on this screen, which is strange, but I'll move it back. OK, so this uh, box includes a bunch of different buttons that you can add or, or remove from your toolbar. And the reason you want to do this is because after working in connection for a while, um, this toolbar right now is the standard reset toolbar. I just reset it completely. But um, there are certain things, certain buttons on this toolbar that I don't actually use ever, or I don't want them to be so easily available. Um, things like this button right here, this is to uh, disconnect or log out. Let's see if I can get it to see file log off. So log off. This is the log on button. This is the log off button. And I can tell you from experience that I have accidentally clicked the log off button while working on a record. 
and it will just log you out. And you, you know, sometimes you lose data. Um, you you lose your cataloging if you accidentally log out right in the middle. So I I actually made a point to remove this button from my toolbar. So what you do is you open the toolbar editor and you can grab this button. And okay, it should show you the little uh, circle with the thing through it. And you just drag it down and it just goes away. Here's another one, a reformat. I'm, I don't even know what this does. So I'm just gonna remove it. Uh, validate, I use. Log on, I use. Authority search, I guess I use all of these over here. Let's see what we have. Update holdings. Uh, produce and update holdings. I let's just remove these. This is a demo. We're just doing it. Okay. Uh, delete holdings. Let's move that down. Uh, control heading single. That seems useful. Uh, export. I don't want that to be a button. I want that to be a little harder to find. Uh, print. I can leave. Um, cut. Copy. Paste. Um, Find and replace, I don't know, ALA, diacritics, that's useful. We'll keep that. Uh, delete record, let's remove that. Uh, view label, I don't know what that does. Um, and we have some navigate uh, your list and a couple of help things. Okay, let's move this one. We don't want that one. And then we're going to add a couple of fields here or a couple of buttons. Let's see. Um, we want to navigate. We want to navigate a uh, large list. So what's this one? View navigate records. Okay. So yeah, this process is not the easiest. Um, I will say that it's actually pretty time consuming. So it's best to plan ahead to decide um, what buttons you want to remove and add. So you grab the button from here and then you just kind of paste it in there and you can put it uh, where you want. But the problem that I found is that once you put it somewhere, you can't grab it and move it on the toolbar. What you have to do is you have to remove it completely and then put it back on the toolbar and then think, oh, wait, I put that in the wrong order. You have to remove this one. And then, oh, and then we add it back in. So it's it's not the most elegant procedure, but it is useful um, in that you can only you can uh, narrow down the buttons you have available to the, only the ones you want available for you in your sort of everyday work. Um, there are certain buttons that I use all the time, and there's certain that I've never pressed ever in all the years I've been cataloging. So I think after you have become familiar with what you have available and sort of the way you like to work, um, it would be good to take a look at um, this toolbar editor and, you know, customize it the best you want, um, how you, you know, the best for you. And if you mess up and you just want to restart over, you just hit reset and it'll ask you if you want to reset and you revert. And this is the default setting um, that comes with connection. Um, okay. I think that's everything I wanted to tell you. So I hope that was useful and I will stop the recording now. Thank you. Oh, actually one more thing. If you have questions about any of this, um, stop my sharing, but uh, you know, please contact us on our Slack channel. It's the Slack channel is called connection underscore users. And um, you know, it's a place to share and ask questions about uh, connection. Okay, thanks. Bye.